Hello, it's me, Skin Glow and Afro. I'm back here again to talk about growing up Black British slash Caribbean here in the UK. Now, obviously, our experience is different, but I was I still classify myself as I class my, classify myself as a British-born Caribbean person purely because if you was to live here and understand how racism affects us you would understand why we don't claim the title british other than by birth and that's it okay so first things first education you understand me education caribbean parents and education is a huge thing massive 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 thing i'm telling you honestly <laughs> like it is massive like they they value education so deeply because you have to remember they came over to this country and they had to build themselves up to a high level to get where they want to get you know to make it better for us who was born in this country they came over here for better opportunities and i want to make sure that their children who was born here who may experience the same or similar things that they did have the best opportunities and success and that's how i can that's how i can pull it out now my parents they are very big on education you know you go to school you go to college you go to university it's like if you don't want to go to university west indian parents are very like what what do you mean you don't want to go to university like they they they, uh, they can't handle a west indian child saying they don't want to go to university they can't handle it as far as them university is the pinnacle of success you know so for for you to come up and say you know what i don't really feel like going to university it's not my thing they don't want to hear that they don't want to hear that no sir and speaking of education oh my god they obsess when it comes to grades when you grades say you get say you get an a in your assignment and your your mother or father asks you what percentage you got and you say like 70%. They will ask you, they will ask you what happened to the other 30%. They are mad. Okay? Like, it's not enough to get an A. You gotta get like a star, 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 star. I remember one time when I was in college and we had to I had to play Macbeth in our English class. So like we're doing like this little um, we had to like act up this role. So I was playing Macbeth when he was having when he was having these hallucinations of his friend that he murdered so i was playing that character and i got a b right and i got home and i told my mom she was really proud of me i told my dad when he got home from work and he was like what happened to the a seriously i'm telling you you got a b yeah and you're saying what happened to the a Though, to be fair to my dad, he's quite sarcastic. He did say it with a smile in his face, so I know he was joking. But, like, seriously, every single time, it's like, what happened to the A? What happened to the A? A is the best thing in life. You only should achieve A. A is everything. A, capital A, small A, middle, middle-sized A. Everything is A, 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 A. That's all the one here. If you're doing, if you, like, get A's and some of your classes are B's or C's or D's, they want to hear that. As long as it's an A, like this, A, A, A. That's all the one here. <clears throat> Moving on, okay? Moving on, because I don't want this video to be too long. Second topic is cooking. Now, if you live in a West Indian family and they don't put you in the kitchen between the ages of 9 to 14 or younger than that, then boy. Because me... I didn't start properly cooking till I was 14. However, when I was younger than that age, my mum used to have me in the kitchen with her, learning how to bake cakes. You know, learning how to, she like makes a cake every single year on Christmas. And see, like me, I'm, I'm not the best, I'm not the best maker. I'm not the best baker, but my mum, she like, she can throw down, she can cook like proper, proper meals, and she can bake cakes. Like me, I'm, I'm not that skilled, but I can cook a proper meal, you know? But I think it's more because I don't do it regularly enough. So you tend to lose your skills. So I think that's what happened because I used to like mess around in the kitchen all the time. She used to just let me mess around. I used to make these little, um, what do you call them, those sponge cakes? I used to make those. And the little cupcakes. 
so you know, I used to do, little, do my little dibble dabble. And if you remember, in secondary school, I don't know whether you did it, but you know, through technology, they would allow you to make like, um, what's that one? That um, upside down cake and pineapple cake and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, in Caribbean households, cooking is a major part of our culture, you know, using seasonings, spices, how you prepare the food is also a big integral part of being Caribbean. We don't just we don't just get the meat and put it in the oven. No, we have to prepare it first. That means washing it, using lime, lemon or vinegar, or you can use all three. It depends on it depends on you. We don't use we don't really use vinegar to wash the meat anymore. We just we just use um lemon or lime depends what's in the house at the time when it comes to when it comes to rice like rice and peas we don't just like you know just just let them cook and don't add anything in no we use we use um butter we use tomato ketchup we use thyme we use garlic we use um scallion which is basically spring on you can call it scallion or scallion it depends on your household you know and like when you're doing rice and peas we also use a thing called cream coconut it's basically just like a block of a block of coconut and you basically just put however much you want into your rice and peas now however if you have diabetes i would not advise you using cream coconut Either you use the grated coconut or you just don't use it at all. Now when it and when it comes to right rice, um you basically you don't do like how you would with rice and peas. You just basically put everything in there together. So you get the rice prepared and you know the onions, garlic, tomato ketchup, butter, you put that all in together rather than putting the ingredients in there first when the peas are almost done. With right rice, you put everything in there together because obviously you just want it to all infuse into the rice. And if you put the rice in afterwards, it may not taste the same. Whereas with rice and peas, you're also leaching the flavour out so it can get into the rice. But with right rice, it's best to just put everything in together. That's a little tip I've learnt. Oh boy. I do I do enjoy I do enjoy cooking. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna front. I do enjoy cooking. I need to get I need to get my ass in the kitchen and start experimenting with some, start experimenting with some, you know, baking once again. Okay, third point, third point. In Caribbean culture, we are very big on sharing folklore tales. So, you know, if you heard about Nancy the Spider-Man, I showed you that book that I had a couple of weeks ago in my What Do I Have in My Caribbean Household video. I showed you that book, that Nancy book. But that's not the only folklore tale we've got. We've actually got quite a lot. We've got Rose Hall. Um, so many folklore videos. I'm actually going to do that video tonight. I meant to do it on Halloween, but it's going to come tonight. So watch out for that Caribbean folklore video. So yes, sharing folklore tales is part of... I believe what we learnt from our African background, being able to, being able to share stories, you know, don't even have to be like round, don't even have to be like round the fire or anything like that, you know, just having your family sit down and you're sharing tales of folklore, like whether you're Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana, whatever, whatever Caribbean country you come from sharing these tales is part of, it's part of bonding, it's part of our culture, it's like you can't get away from it and honestly why would you i mean even though i was born here in the uk i've heard of these folklore tales even my dad will tell me about even my dad tells me about some of them you know so i love it and when i have children myself i shall be sharing the same things as well so you know it's all good <sighs> number four going on holidays now before when the first time i went on holiday i believe i was only two years old so i didn't really remember it however we went to jamaica and that was when my jamaican nan was still living in jamaica she's here in the uk now and like one thing i can say about my caribbean background is my parents were very very influential about making sure i knew about my Caribbean culture, they never let go of that. They said like, this is how we do things in the Caribbean. We're going to adapt it to where we live in now, but you're still going to learn it. 
okay? And it's like now, it's like people calling me British, like, oh, you're, you're a British girl. I'm like, mm, yeah, by birth, that's it. Or they call you English, I cannot stand that. English girl! Because they know, like, they know, okay? Because the way you walk is different. Here in the UK, we walk fast because you've got to keep warm. In the Caribbean, they, they walk in a little bit slower because obviously it's hot and they're not trying to, they're not trying to sweat up themselves. Not like us, we're like, boom, 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 boom. But them in the, them in the Caribbean, they walk slower. They more, they walk more relaxed. And even when you think you're slowing yourself down to how they are, it's like they still recognize you're not one of them however it's not it's not a bad thing anyway it's just more like a cultural difference here in the uk we tend to be a lot more we tend to be a lot more fast and everything and in the caribbean they tend to be a bit more slow now my um jamaican nan she lives here in the uk so when i visit her i go around to her house over here and thank god she lives in birmingham um my barbadian nan she still lives in barbados so god willing i'll be able to go to barbados next year and see her and she seems to be doing all right so i'm good i'm good good i'm just hoping that you know the day i come to i go to move to barbados full time she'll still be alive because you have to realize especially with caribbean grandparents because all they've been through to come over to this country and the racism that they dealt with once they're gone that's it you're not going to have that connection anymore and this is what people need to realise. You need to be like chatting to your grandparents, talking to them about their experiences, writing it down. Because once their legacy is gone, that's it. It's going to be you. And I feel, I said this in multiple videos I've done before, I feel like we are literally losing our Caribbean culture. Like, it's, it's like the grasp of our hands. It's like it's coming out. It's like we can't hold on to it anymore. And I understand adapting over the years because culture changes over the years and obviously we cannot expect in England 2018 to still have a strong connection to the Caribbean however if you let it go what are your children going to have to look back on oh they're British through and through but what about your but what about but what about your Caribbean heritage is does that does that not matter like even now, even now I'm grown and I'm still thankful that my parents took me back to Jamaica, my baby, where they are from and taught me the culture and how things go, how things go over there. Because even now, my dad will still tell me things like about how in Jamaica they drink coca tea and they drink a load of bush teas, you know, all these things. And like they're not very focused on medicinal things. They prefer like to self-treat, you know. So this is the things, like, we're going to lose this if we don't do something about it. So it's unfortunate. Now, where my topic five? Topic five. Going back to the racism topic, this is going to be the last topic I'm going to talk about in this video. And this one's going to be a little, at least, like, five minutes. So going back to the racist topic. Um, Being here in the UK, born here in the UK, my my Beijing mother would always tell me how even though even though um, I was born in this country she would always remind me that I as a black girl would have to work 10 times harder than a white person just to get half of what they get and I know I know a lot of black people can actually relate to this simply because simply because it is so hard to live in this country like there is disadvantages from the day you were born up until up until your adulthood this is a fact i don't understand why people keep denying it yes there are more opportunities here than there may be in the caribbean however you also have to understand that racism plays a big part in how we how we have to fight for our voices to be heard how we have to negotiate this world we live in and if you don't understand this, then I will suggest you don't come here. Because unfortunately, no matter how many qualifications you may have, you may not get a job. Because you may have more qualifications than a white person, but the white person gets the job simply because their name sounds better because of the colour of the because the colour of their skin. It's that simple, you know? And this is what my parents would always tell me about you have to work harder to get half of what these 
half of what these people are getting now this does not mean you will not succeed and this does not mean that you can't get through university and get a great job you know all this simply means is you have to be aware of these things and know you have to work harder so you can succeed in life you know and if you can't if you can't do that and if you don't have the backbone for that that's okay that's okay it's perfectly acceptable to understand that it's just very very frustrating that people will say well racism doesn't exist in the uk yes it does have you not been reading the newspapers have you not been seeing what's going on the rainwash thing is a massive 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 issue currently and it's still going on i said this in my other video that i did lot that i did two weeks ago how about um how many was it i think 11 11 people from the Windrush have died before having their before having their citizenship resolved is it not pointless now they're dead you know they've not had their situation resolved and Theresa May clearly to me does not feel a way and another thing another thing that really really bothers me is the simple fact that being here being here as a caribbean person living in this country have you not noticed how the markets have been gentrified brixton market is the latest casualty brixton market in london it's the latest casualty it's been it's effectively been shut down and a load of these a load of these markets that were started by caribbean people are being are being closed and i'm just thinking to myself like once these markets have gone that is it that's a legacy that's a legacy gone once again and people don't seem people don't seem to understand this once they're gone that's it what are you gonna have what exactly are you going to have and it's all it's all racism and classism unfortunately that's what it that's what it boils down to and it's like we can't even we can't even like we can't even have black history month because now black history month is also being gentrified they want to have they want to have them um, white history month and they want to have white history month and they want to include asian people in black history month i'm like what is this madness because think about it, a lot of the events in black history month here in the uk are based on what are based on what caribbean people have done in this country or what um or what african people have done in this country to abolish slavery so now for you to include asian people and white people in black history month that is a big slap in the face to our ancestors it really is so i'm really not here for the nonsense i'm really not and these are all the things we had to experience you know oh before I go, I forgot to put this in education as well. Um, racism crops up in education, like I said. However, however, this whole thing about um, whether teachers should be teaching black children about proper black history. Personally, I never really, I never really learned that much about black history from. The white teachers in my, my primary school or my secondary school they just didn't teach it they would like spend loads of time speaking about the Tudors, the victorians the edwardians they would speak a little bit about slavery it was like the white people went the white people went to the um went to africa to take the slaves out of the country and then they came and then they came and then they came to the uk and the caribbean and america and that was it that's all that's basically all they taught they just said they just basically said oh and um, black people were slaves and that was it that's all i learned in school now for me the bulk of what i learned about black history month i learned by myself or i learned from my parents this is the thing if you are a caribbean parent living in this country you it is your responsibility to teach your children about black history month don't ever expect white institutions to be teaching your children about their history they are not focused on that we are only a small minority in this country they are focused on teaching the history of the country that they are in think about you go to the caribbean you're a student in the in the caribbean they're going to teach you history about the caribbean right 
you go to America, they're going to teach you the history of America. So why would you as a black person expect them to teach the history, your history, when even though they will only teach you, they won't only teach you the slavery part of the history, you know? So if you understand that, you will understand why they will not talk about it. And it's as simple as that, really. So yeah, and that's another thing. Black History Month, as a as a British born Caribbean, it's like what black history do we actually learn in these white dominated schools little to nothing even though my schools were multicultural there was black asian and white children they still did not teach you that much and you can't rely on them to teach you that much because that does not benefit them at all so basically you're wasting your breath you as a black parent needs to be teaching your child 99.9 .9 of the black history the truth it's on you. You as a parent, I feel, are not doing your job if you do not teach your child about black history. If that, if your child is black, simple things. You can um, you can argue with me all day. I don't care. You as a black parent need to teach your child about black history. It's as simple as that. All right. Some skin glowing afro, and I'm out. Bye.